Good afternoon. I am Kamlis. I'm about one of the teaching assistants of this lab, Geotech, and I'm glad to be the one doing the video for you today. Thanks to my other teachers for helping me record this video. All right, so um, today we are going to do a tablet limit test, and these are the objectives for today. So the first objective is to determine the liquid limit and the plastic limit of the soil sample. The second objective is to determine the plasticity index. Then the third objective is to classify the soil using the atabeg limit. So to give a background about the atabeg limit, let's assume you have a sample of soil in a bowl and then you add water to it. At that state, the sample is solid. So when you add water to it, some amount of water, it becomes semi-solid. Now, the transition from solid to semi-solid is the shrinkage limit. However, we are not going to fit shrinkage limit into this lab. So let's move on to the plastic limit. So from the semi-solid state into the plastic stage is uh, what you see when you add more water to it. And then the transition from the semi-solid to the plastic limit uh, state is the plastic limit. All right, so from the plastic, yeah, so from the plastic stage to the liquid stage, the transition from that is called the liquid limit. And that happens when you add more water to it. So you, you can see clearly that you are increasing the moisture content of the cell and that is why it's becoming more liquid as you go on. So the first thing that we do here, the liquid limit, and for that we are going to fill the Casagrande apparatus with the soil and we are going to cut a groove through it. We are going to crank this to the revolutions per second and see how the groove closes. And it has to close with a length of 30 millimeters. So the first thing that we are going to do, we are going to make sure that the groove closes in length of 30 millimeters between the blows of 30 and 40. Now after that, we are going to increase the moisture content, which means it is easier for the grooves to close. So we should require lesser number of blows to close that. That is how come the second test has to require only 20 to 30 blows. So we have to make sure that there's the number of blows that are required to close the groove fall between this interval. And then we are going to wipe the apparatus, clean it, and also perform the test test and make sure that the groove closes between the blows of 10 and 20. All right, so um, for all the tests, we are going to take samples and put them in the oven and determine the various moisture content that the closure happened. And then we are going to plot the number of blows required to close the groove against their respective moisture content. Now, after plotting this graph, this becomes our flow curve but then the liquid limit is the moisture content at which we are able to close the groove at 25 blows. And for us to determine that, we just trace our 25 blows up to the flow curve and to the vertical axis, and the corresponding moisture content becomes our liquid limit. That is why we have liquid limit at 42%. So that's how we, we determine our liquid limit. Our session of the Atabeg limit test, and this is my uh, water in my wash bottle. And this is my 250 grams of soil passing through number 40 sieve. This is my Casagrande apparatus. This is my spatula. And this is my groove. And these are my three cans which I'll be storing the, the test specimens in to determine the moisture content. So now I'm going to uh, mix the sample and make sure that the moisture content is such that when we rotate the Casagrande apparatus, the blows fall between 30 and 40. And that's the next step. All right, there we go. Now I'm mixing it with the water and making sure that it reaches the consistency I want. So now I'm going to wipe the cap clean to make sure it doesn't interfere with the closing of the grooves. Now I'm going to fill the cap with the sample and then be able to create the groove. All right, so we are filling in the sample. I'm going to pat the soil by using the groove. So we are going to do two revolutions per second. So this is the second test and we expect the number of blows to fall between 20 to 30. So now we measure the mass of the empty can because you will determine the mass of the sample before you put it in the oven. So my 
uh, scale is at zero grams. So, that's so now we take a portion of the sample and put it into the uh, empty can and weigh it. So this is expected to close between the blows of 10 to 20. So we just completed the liquid limit test and then we have the first uh, test for him at uh, 37 blows. The second one fell at 27 and the last one fell at 15. So what happens next is that after my sample is over dry, I will measure the moisture content that uh, uh, it is before I dry it and I plot the number of blows against the various moisture content and I'll be able to get the corresponding 25 from that and that becomes my liquid limit. Alright, so just to give a quick recap of how to calculate the moisture content. So our moisture content is W1 over W2 times 100% and our W1 is weight of water. And the weight of water is simply the weight of the moist soil minus the weight of the dry soil. And that we get it from uh, subtracting the weight that we get after drying the oven from the weight that we get when we measure it on the scale first after the test. And then the W2, of course, is the weight of the dry soil. And then when you use this, you get the moisture content and you are able to plot it. So um, we are moving on to the plastic limit test. And this uh, actually, basically, what we do is that we roll um, uh, an ellipsoidal size soil mass on a glass plate, and we measure the moisture content which it crumbles at a diameter of 3.2 millimeters, and that becomes a plastic limit. Now I'm going to add water to this soil sample and mix it. I'm showing my caliper I've set it to 3.2 millimeters because that's going to be our guide to measure the diameter of the um, sample to see if it crumples at the right diameter So we can see this has crumpled and I'm going to measure to see. All right, so the measurement is 3.2 millimeters and that's what we want. All right, so that was the end of the plastic limit and then the plastic limit and the liquid limit uh, is what comprise of our atabic limits for today. And for the plastic limit, after you get a soft mass crumpled, what you do is to uh, do the, repeat the test again. You have two samples and then you determine the moisture content at which the two samples crumple and then once you find an average of those it becomes a plastic limit thank you for joining today's lab i hope to see you next time i'm coming useful